Welcome to another episode of My Hero, My Life. Today we're going to be doing something really cool, really new, really exciting, and it's this brand new series of what if Asta and Deku were twin brothers. If you're not familiar with this series, Black Clover, the main character's name is Asta. He's this really cool dude with his magical sword. If you haven't seen Black Clover, you may want to go watch that series. If not, that's fine. I think you'll be able to watch this just fine without it. But either way, I hope you're a fan of the series, either one, and we're going to just make a really cool mashup. And with that being said, let's do this. Two young boys run into a kitchen with grins sprawled across their faces. They cheer the number one hero's name and race back to the computer room. Inko Midoriya follows her two sons. Asta? Izuku? You boys really like that video, huh? Yeah, All Might is so strong, Asta says as he climbs into the chair with his fraternal twin. Izuku nods in agreement. Their mother murmurs something about her finding it scary. Izuku replies, but he is always smiling, mom. That is true, mutters the mom as she leaves the boys to watch the video. The two stare at the screen with wide eyes. Unable to look away, they watch with as much excitement as the very first day they saw this video. Once it finishes, Azuka declares, I will be a hero just like him! Good luck, because I'm going to be the number one hero, Asta states, the voice beaming with confidence. His brother laughs and tackles him out of the chair. The two wrestle around while proclaiming their destinies. When their mother returns, she gently pulls them apart. Though she knows they're only playing, the boys have already made a huge mess. Thinking up of a clever question, she asks, What heroes can help me with all this destruction? Captain All Might and yells Asta as he leaps up from the floor and places his fists on his hips. Izuku quickly follows suit with calling out Super Might! A few months later, Inko takes her children to see a doctor. Despite both being four, neither of the boys has shown any signs of a quirk. The two are separated and their mother moves between their rooms waiting to hear the test results. She is in Asta's room when the doctor joins them. He puts the results of an x-ray up. Even though this boy doesn't show any sign of a quirk yet, this x-ray shows that he does have one. If you look at the pinky bone of the foot, you might notice there is only one bone. Since quirks are the next step in human evolution, this trait can be seen via the removal of a rather vestigial part of the anatomy. The white-haired boy jumps up from his seat and cheers, unable to contain the excitement he feels. The woman sighs in relief. If one of her children has a hidden quirk, surely the other one must too. Minutes pass, and she sits with Izuku, waiting for the doctor to enter. The two are talking about what his quirk might be, since the boy's brother has been shown to have one. A knock on the door causes the mother and son to quiet down. They call for the doctor to come into the room. The doctor enters looking bored. Like in the room before he puts up an x-ray, his mother can see the difference as soon as it lights up. Izuku's pinky toe has more than one bone. The woman gasps in shock. The boy looks up at her. What's wrong, mom? A lump forms in her throat and she is unable to speak. The doctor lets out a sigh of exasperation. He points to the bones. Kid, you don't have a quirk. If you did, there would only be one bone in your pinky toe. How can this be? They're twins, asks Inko, more for the boy than herself since she already understands the answer. The doctor sighs again. He shrugs. They're not identical twins. Being fraternal, they don't share the same DNA. Izuku's face breaks into a false smile as his eyes take a blank look. His brother peeks in from behind the cracked door. The look of his brother's face terrifies him. The car is silent on the way home. Izuku's face stays the same mask. Asa tries to get his attention by waving his hand in front of his brother's eyes. It is no use. When the family flies out of the car and into the house, the quirkless boy heads for the computer room. Inko follows her distraught son and pushes play on his favorite video. 
Once his hero appears, the tears come. They sit at the edge of his eyes while Inko walks to the door. She pauses as she hears the video as Zuku turns towards her. He's such a cool hero. Can I be a hero too? She rushes to hold him in her arms and apologizes as if his lack of a quirk is her own fault. Her words cause the tears to fall. Outside, Asta peers through the cracked door. Again, he feels terrible. This time, not due to fear, but a deep sadness. He whispers, if only to himself. Of course you can't. Time marches on. Azuka becomes quieter and withdrawn. Asta seems to do the opposite, being loud all the time. Both find themselves in the same class of the self-proclaimed prodigy, Katsuki Bakugo. The other boy got his quirk, a strong one, at a young age and loves to remind everyone just how powerful he truly is. During recess, he picks on those with weaker quirks. Like one of the many times before, he stands over another child with his hands sparking. He reaches towards the kid, but Izuku steps between them. He does not speak, just stands there, staring down the blonde boy. The quiet defiance in this quirkless boy infuriates Bakugo. He lets loose an explosion that sends Izuku stumbling away. Stepping closer, the angry boy says, What makes you think that you can stop me, defenseless Izuku? There's gotta be a way to shorten that. Yeah, we'll just call you Deku from now on. When the other boy continues to just stand there without saying anything, Bakugo's blood begins to boil. He places his hand on Izuku's shoulder and lets out another explosion. As the boy stumbles back again, his brother catches sight of the scene. Asta rushes in and shoves Bakugo away. The white-haired boy yells, You better quit it, Kachan! Just knock it off! Why? You gonna stop me if I don't? The blonde boy roars and reaches for Asta. The other boy smacks Kotsky's hand away. He smacks his second reaching hand away and tries to fight back. Asta swings his fist, but Bakugo blocks it. A large black sword manifests into Asta's hand and crashes into the ground next to the other boy. Startled, Kotsky trips over it. Asta stares at the handle as it drags him to the ground. Excitement rises as he realizes that this must be the result of him finally getting his own quirk. He shouts, Awesome! I have a sword! So, it won't help you if you can't swing it. The blonde boy stands and moves in front of the boy with a sword. He looks down at Asta. A grin spreads across his face as he reaches for him. The grin falters, turning into a grimace. After a moment, tears threaten his eyes. What did you say to me? Why can't I use my quirk? I don't know, but this is really cool, yells Asta, his eyes locked under the sword. Bakugo turns away, realizing that his quirk seems to not be working, and he runs back inside. Izuku makes his way over and glances down at the sword. When Asta looks up, he sees the tears pooling in the corner of his brother's eyes. He tries to yell encouragement to the other boy, but his voice catches in his throat again. He can only mouth the words while the quirkless boy murmurs something about the sword being cool. The school day ends and the boys return home. Asta is quick to tell Inko about his new quirk. He describes coming to his brother's rescue. Beaming with pride, the boy says, Mom, I got my quirk today. I used it to save Azuku. Inko smiles at Asta and replies, That's great. Already on your way to being my little hero. The boys continue to describe his quirk. I am. I made a giant sword appear. It was black and it stopped Bakugo's quirk. That sounds so... Did you say you got a giant sword? Asks Inko. A trace of bewilderment is in her voice. She stares at the boy with a confused look on her face. The quirk does not sound like one the boy could have inherited from her or the boy's father. Her enthusiasm starts fading as she realizes that her other child has been silent the whole time. She puts her hand on Izuku's shoulder. The woman is unable to find words to comfort the boy. She pulls him in for a hug. He does not return the gesture, instead just standing there and shaking. Asta watches his mother and brother hug. The three of them should be happy and celebrating. As he realizes that this may never be the case, he feels his own excitement diminish. Standing apart from them, the boy cannot help but to feel left out. 
It is a feeling that Asta becomes accustomed to. He tries not to think about it and spends the following days training his body. The size of the sword that his court produces is too big for the child to wield. Even so, the boy is determined to get strong enough to do just that. Azuku begins to train his mind, studying heroes and taking notes on them. He still holds the tiniest glimmer of hope in his heart that he can become a hero. Bakugo is unsettled by Asta's seemingly powerful quirk. He still thinks himself the better, as the boy cannot use it. And guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the first part of What If Deku and Asta Were Twins. Guys, hey, if you guys like this video, make sure that you guys follow me on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of this series. And with that being said, we'll see you guys next time.